Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Um, I'm Aaron with Unlimited Sports News and today we are going to do a new thing. Um, it's week in sports. I'm going to be covering the biggest news of sports each week. So let's get started. So first up, we have trades. There is NFL, MLB, and NBA trades that all happen this week. So starting with the NBA, of course, there is the major James Harden trade on Halloween. It sent James Harden, P.J. Tucker, and Philip Petrushev to the Los Angeles Clippers. The Philadelphia 76ers received Marcus Morris Sr., Robert Covington, Kenyon Martin Jr., Nicholas Batum, a 2028 unprotected first-round pick, two second-round picks, one first-round pick swap, and a least favorable 2026 OKC first-round pick. The Oklahoma State Thunder received nothing yet, but the trade, I don't even know if it's finalized yet. So, for this trade, the Clippers get James Harden, who is on a one-year, $35 million a year deal left. The They also get P.J. Tucker, who's going to have to step into a much bigger role now that they traded away three or four of their power forwards. Yeah, that's four power forwards all gone from their team. Then they... So, P.J. Tucker is going to be able to help. He's just a good rebounder. In his team debut, he had zero points but five rebounds. So, Harden's going to help with the scoring. The starting lineup is going to be James Harden at the one, Westbrook at the two, or switch those two, Paul George at the three, Kawhi at the four, and Zubats at the five. So, Harden's going to help them get a lot more space and scoring and everything. And then Philip Petrushev, who we will talk a little bit more about in a few seconds, but he was a draft and stash. So for the Clippers, I will give them a B plus for this trade just because they traded for Harden, who is on the last year of his deal. They only have like four or five people under contract for next season based off right now as Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Harden, all of them are free agents. So that's really not good for the team. They need to sign them to some extensions if they are willing to. But then for the 76ers, they get Marcus Morris, who is really overpaid. He's making like $19 million a year this year. But he was not in the rotation for Los Angeles. He could step it up in Philadelphia and play better. They get Robert Covington, who was a former 76er until like 2019 in the Jimmy Butler trade, I think. He used to play there. He's been pretty good. He was not in the rotation at all for L.A. this year and was kind of complaining about it. He gets traded. Then Kenyon Martin Jr., who I thought the Clippers would not trade at all. He came from the Rockets in the offseason. He's a really athletic player. Of course, the son of Kenyon Martin, former first overall pick. And then Nicholas Batum, who I think this is his last year, according to what he's been saying and stuff, before he retires. It will be spent in Philadelphia, so and he's kind of overpaid too, making like eleven million dollars a year. Then they get this first, which is pretty big. Then they get two seconds and a pick swap and an OKC pick. That's an A minus. That's a great return for a guy that wasn't even playing basketball for you. So that's a good trade for Philadelphia. Next up for the Clippers and Kings, they made a very minor trade the day after. The Los Angeles Clippers received the draft rights to Luka Mitrovic, who was the 60th and final overall pick in the 2015 NBA draft. And for the Kings, they received Philip Petrushev, who was involved in that Harden deal, and $1.5 million that they could spend. So for the Clippers, they get Mitrovic. And that's it. Like, they traded away a guy that I think could have helped the Clippers since they traded away all those power forwards, and they don't have any big men. And they gave away $1.5 million just to, like, kind of make the Kings accept it. The Kings now get a young guy with their open roster spot and some money for a guy that was never going to come to the NBA anyway. Mitrovic is 30 and not even that good in the EuroLeague. And he hasn't even ever been to Summer League or anything, I don't think. So... The Clippers, I'm going to give them a D plus because they basically just gave away a guy. Petrushev and $1.5 million to the Kings, that's a B plus for sure because they got him for nothing, basically. And then shifting over to the NFL, these are all NFL trade deadline day trades. So first off, the Seahawks got Leonard Williams 
for a 2024 second and a 2025 fifth. This is, I think, the day before the trade deadline. But if you look at Leonard Williams, Williams this season in eight games has 1.5 sacks and 13 solo tackles for his career. He has been a pro bowler once in 2016, and he has been a pretty good player overall. This year, he's kind of fallen off, but he's definitely going to help Seattle with that offensive line or that defensive line. Of course, like they, they, they really won that trade. They get they get an A minus for it because he's of course he's not as good as he once was, but he's going to help that D line that also added Frank Clark this week. Then the Giants got a 2024 second and a 2025 fifth. For the Giants, that's a great return for a guy that was struggling with you. I think he really just needed a change of scenery, though. So they get two good picks this year. Um, So for the Giants, I'll give it a B-, and for the Seahawks, I'll give it an A- minus because they get still a good pass rusher to help with that defensive line. Next up, the Falcons got Contavious Street and a 2024 seventh-round pick from the Eagles for a 2024 sixth-round pick. So the Eagles just traded up one round and gave away a guy. And Street, the Falcons are trading for Street because, of course, Grady Jarrett, one of their best defensive players, suffered the torn ACL in their last game. So for the Falcons, they get a C-plus just because they're now getting a young pass rusher, Contavious Street, who's played in all eight games this year. And they're tra- just trading down a round to get him. So C-plus for both teams, I'd say, because the Eagles weren't really playing him. They have a ton of young guys, Nicobe Dean, and Jalen Carter and all them street wasn't getting much playing time anyway. And then the next trade for the Bears, they got Montez Sweat, who's an amazing defensive lineman still, from the Commanders for a 2024 second round pick this year. So for the Bears, I'm going to give it an A+, plus because they really upgraded their D-line in that trade. But for the Commanders, I'm giving it a C, because... They only got a second-round pick for a guy that could be an All-Pro this year. I don't know if he's been an All-Pro before, but we can check that pretty quick. Sweat was never an All-Pro, but this year in eight games, he has one pass deflection, two forced fumbles, six-and-a-half sacks, 32 combo tackles, 21 solo tackles, 11 assisted tackles, and 11 quarterback hits. He is amazing this year as the Washington Redskins defensive uh, lineman. And the Redskins were just selling anyway. They get a second for him, so they get a C for that. And the Bears get Sweat, who really helps their defense. That has also Tremaine Edmonds, who they added this year. And uh, I forgot the safety's name. It's like Eddie Jackson or something. But they now have a really good defense. They could make a really late playoff push like the Lions did last year. Next up, the Vikings got Josh Dobbs and a 2024 conditional seventh-round pick for a sixth-round pick this year. For the Vikings, Dobbs comes here. And since Kirk Cousins tore his Achilles and they didn't want Jaron Hall to be the full-time starter, even though I saw something that said he was going to get a decent amount of snaps in their game tomorrow, Dobbs comes in and he can really help. He's been pretty decent for the Cardinals so far this year. They also get a conditional seventh round pick this year. And then the Cardinals receive a sixth round pick. I feel like they could have done a lot better for Dobbs. Dobbs, I feel like, could have been traded to a team where he would have been a full time backup and got them a sixth round pick. So I feel like the Vikings should have had to give up more. So they kind of won that trade easily with the Cardinals. Next up, or so, for the Vikings, I give it a B-. minus. For the Cardinals, they get a D. Next up, the Vikings traded Ezra Cleveland, who is a really good offensive lineman, actually. Really underrated. Not the best in the world. I think he was coming off the bench for the Vikings. But he's a pretty good lineman that can come in to Jacksonville and start. Jacksonville traded to Minnesota a sixth-round pick this year to get him. For Minnesota, I'm giving them a D-plus because he's still pretty young. He has a little bit of potential. And for Jacksonville, I'm giving them a C-plus because they barely gave up anything to get a good lineman. Then you have the 49ers trading for Chase Young to give them the greatest defense in the NFL. By far, Fred Warner, Chase Young, everyone else on that team, Nick Bosa. 
So they get Chase Young for a third-round pick this year. Chase Young was the former second overall pick, and he wasn't even playing that bad. And the Commanders decided to give him up for a third-round pick. So for Washington, they 100% get an F- minus because they sold their best two defensive players for a second-round pick and a third-round pick. That is insane. So the Commanders get an F-, minus, and the 49ers 100% get an A+, plus because they had so much cap room. They went out and spent a little bit of it, and they get a guy that should have gone for a first-round pick Maybe if he wasn't as injury prone, he's been kind of injured. That's the thing about the Niners. They just have so many guys that get injured a lot. Then the Lions traded for Donovan Peoples-Jones for, I think, a fifth-round pick from the Cleveland Browns. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones has been pretty good the last few years. I think he's in his third year now. Peoples-Jones is. I could be confusing him with the other guy. But I think Peoples-Jones, he's a pretty good wide receiver um was with the Browns he was their third wide receiver I think wide receiver three they offload him for a fifth round pick I give the Lions a B plus because he can now be their wide receiver two over Khalif Raymond and then the Browns get a D and then for the Packers they traded away one of their longest tenured players Rasul Douglas and a fifth round pick this year to the Bills for a third round pick this year Douglas has been in the NFL for a really long time he's been pretty good with the Packers and they traded him to the Bills. For the Bills, they get him and a fifth-round pick this year. I give them a B-. minus. It could be higher after we see him play tomorrow in his team debut. But for the Packers, they get a C for getting just a third-round pick in return. And then the MLB, the only trade that's happened yet this offseason, the Mariners get Cody Bolton, a right-hand pitcher, for cash from the Pirates. For the Mariners, I am going to give it an A. He's a young pitcher. Didn't see much action last year, but the Pirates, I'll give them a C because they offload him for some cash. Next up, we are going to check out some college football scores that are today. It is currently 1.08 p.m. Central Time. And there are some good games on right now. So, first of all, at the beginning of the third, Rutgers is leading Ohio State 9-7 to in a low-scoring game. The number one team in the country struggling against the Scarlet Knights. Then Ole Miss is beating Texas A&M 20-14 at the end of the third quarter. Tennessee is absolutely demolishing UConn 42-3. At the start of the second half, so they're on pace to get 84, but they're going to put in all their bench guys and everything. So Arkansas and Florida tied up at 17 at about the start of the third quarter there. 10-10 for Michigan and Nebraska at the 12-minute mark in the third. Jacksonville State only trails to South Carolina by seven at the start of the third. Navy and Temple just started. And then Kansas State, the number 23 team in the country, losing to number 7 Texas at Texas, 17-7 to at the 11-minute mark in the third. Notre Dame losing to Clemson, 30-16. to Notre Dame, number 15 in the country. Arizona State and Utah just began. And then at the 10-minute mark in the third, Indiana up on Wisconsin, 17-14. And then UNC beating Campbell, 35-7. At about halftime, Kennesaw State's beating Sam Houston 20-7, to and then Georgia Tech and Virginia is getting ready to start. And then the last few days, there's some Halloween games. Central Michigan beat Northern Illinois 37-31, to and then Toledo beat Buffalo 31-13, and I wasn't able to watch any of those games because I was at basketball trials. And then Ball State lost to Bowling Green 24-21, Akron beat Kent State 31-17. Texas Tech beat TCU 35-28 in a Big 12 showdown. Duke beat Wake Forest 24-21. South Alabama lost to Troy 28-10. And then Boston College beat Syracuse 17-10. And Wyoming beat Colorado State 24-15. So now back to the slideshow or whatever. Um... The major NBA storylines right now in the NBA. 
So the NBA G League draft finished up on Saturday, last Saturday. So it's been seven days since the G League draft has finished up. And it was a really boring G League draft this year. Usually there are some NBA, former NBA players getting selected. But this year there was basically no one. So the first overall pick in the G League draft, the Texas Legends, the Dallas Mavericks affiliate, selected Jack White, who the Thunder signed to a contract this offseason, released him before the season began. He had a 200K guarantee. But he goes to the Legends. He played for the Nuggets and won a championship with them last season. Then... The Lakers, the South Bay Lakers, the Lakers team, traded for Jack White. They traded for him the second overall pick, guy Tiafale Leonard Jr., who I've never heard of. I think he only averaged like nine points a game in college. I've never heard of this David Muaka guy from Capital City Go-Go. Javante Perkins was pretty good in college at St. Louis, but it'll be interesting to see what he can do at the G League level. The Grand Rapids Gold picked. Will Richardson from Oregon at five. He was a good guard there. Got some assists. Really good defender. Tall guard. Then this guy, I don't even know how to pronounce his name. I don't know him. Shriver, I don't know him. Then the Greensboro Swarm at eight picked Isaiah Mosley. He went to somewhere in Missouri, but he was pretty good. Then my Thunders G League affiliate, the OKC Blue, selected Logan Johnson from St. Mary's. He was a fifth-year senior last year and was pretty good. Looked at as a potential second-round pick. Did not get drafted. The Thunder could call him up if they decide to promote Olivier Saar or Lindy Waters or somebody else that's doing really good to the active roster. Then the, this guy, I don't know him, Miles Burns, I think is from like Xavier. Uh, this guy, I have no idea. Bryson Warren from Overtime Elite goes 13th. Walter Ellis, he played in the TBT this year. He is the son of LaFonso Ellis, played for Team Heartfire. Goes 15th overall to the Grand Rapids Gold. Marcus Burke goes 16th to the Santa Cruz Warriors. Um, Manny Camper was really good the last two years for the Grand Rapids Gold. He goes 20th to the Sioux Falls Sky Force. Brandon Rashal from Tulsa has been playing for the uh, Brooklyn Nets G League team the last few years. Elijah Harkless, he's from Oklahoma to the Ontario Clippers. Kokiat. He was with the Knicks Summer League team or something this year. He goes to the Iowa Wolves from Overtime Elite. Big athletic wing. Um, Jared Wilson Frame was has been in the G League forever, like 10 years in the G League by now. He goes to the Skyhawks. And then Wendell Green Jr. goes to the Celtics. He was the point guard for the... Auburn Tigers the last year. Then Scotty Lewis, former Charlotte Hornet, goes to the Windy City Bulls, the Chicago Bulls team at 32. And then Caleb Ledoux, I don't know where he went, but the name sounds familiar. He went 36 to the Stockton Kings. Sincere Carey, who was amazing in college at Kent State or Kennesaw State, one of them, goes 38th to the Memphis Hustle. He was amazing. It's going to be interesting to see how good he is because he's he was pretty good in college. No gel Eastern. I actually have a signed trading card of him at Purdue. He goes 41 to the Iowa Wolves. David Bell goes 42. Stephon Hicks, who's another guy that's been in the G League for like 10 years, goes to the Fort Wayne Mad Ants, who is, he's been playing with before. I think he actually played with the Pacers before. He goes 43. Um... Davion Warren from Texas Tech goes 49. David Sloan, former Kansas State player and played at Missouri the last year, goes to the Fort Wayne, Fort Wayne Mad Ants at 50. Denzel Mahoney, he was amazing at St. Seton Hall. Seton Hall, Seton Hall. Goes 57 to the Iowa Wolves. He's pretty good. And then Kyrie Walker was really hyped up in college. I forgot where he went. DePaul, I think. He went to the Rio Grande Valley Vipers at 62. He has been playing. For the Washington Wizards G League team, um, I forgot what they're called, but he has been playing with them for the last two or three years. If there's any other like random NBA stuff that just happened, we're about to see about it, but I don't see anything new. No, there's nothing new. So that's that thing. Cooper Flag picks to go to the Duke Blue Devils. That happened 
over the week. And then the NBA announced their city jerseys and their in-season tournament courts officially. So we are going to be doing a tier list, a really quick, like really, really, really quick, low analysis version of this tier list. That on YouTube, just oh yeah, to change that. Okay, so then now, so we're going to just do a really quick version of this tier list. So the Atlanta Hawks, the Times New Roman lowercase font. I kind of like the color scheme though, with the light blue and the black, but I just don't like the font and everything. So it's gonna go in the trash section. The Boston Celtics, they have the little wood on the side. I kind of like the font. It's a pretty good jersey compared to all the other ones. It's in the Mets here. The Brooklyn Nets, it's some like collab with somebody, but it's not very good. It's way too colorful. It doesn't fit the Nets color scheme, so they're going to go in the dog crap. Buzz City Hornets on par with some of the last few years. I think it's better than their city jersey last year, which I had in the B tier. Um, Chicago Bulls, it's way too plain. I think I if I think if they would have put a Bulls logo like right here, it would have looked way better. But it's just way too empty, way too much empty space with the Chicago and everything. Then we have D Land Cleveland. It's gonna go in the trash tier along with that Atlanta jersey. The Dallas Mavericks jersey just gets the job done. It goes with the Boston Celtics. They're both just kind of generic, except for the Celtics with the wood. Uh, the Mavs just the same way. It's just pretty normal. Then the Nuggets goes in the Carl Malone section, if you know, you know. Um, I just don't know why they put the elevation level as the same font size as the jersey number. It's kind of confusing. Detroit goes in the trash tier. Theirs isn't as bad as it was last year for their city jersey. Um, but it's on par with, I think, Atlanta and all them. San Francisco, Warriors, whatever they are called. With the wavy, I don't like it. H Town, this is actually good. I love the H Town jerseys. The they're so clean, especially the one that they had in 2020. This one's not as good as that one, but it's still pretty good. Then the indie jersey goes in the Carl Malone. Looks kind of like SpongeBob has like the gradient yellow thing with the. I don't know. You can look it up. It's terrible. The Clippers, that's just like these are all like the same style of jerseys. They're all just kind of like the same the Lakers goes in the Mets here they're not that good Memphis I actually like these but it's just like you don't even know what they're saying and that it's like M-E-M -E and then the heat culture one I don't know why culture is so big the Milwaukee Bucks I really like these and then the Minnesota Timberwolves the land of thousand lakes jerseys with like the crystal design I love those those are actually pretty good the New Orleans Pelicans, who have NOLA and green with green, lime green letter numbers and everything. Those are in the Carl Malone section. New York Knicks. Those are pretty good, actually. I think those are really clean with the pinstripes and then the New York and um, label or layered New York. And then now we're in a streak of some pretty good jerseys. The OKC Thunder. They're really clean. They're blue with the orange letters, and then they have, like, some Thunder logos and stuff thrown in in the background, like, mixed in. Then the Orlando Magic kind of look like Cowboys jerseys, so they're going to go, like, with just a generic trash tier. Then the City of Brotherly Love jerseys. I need to see the court for this one, if it's going to be good or not. I'm going to move Detroit up to the Met, actually, and – I want to move up Atlanta, but I don't want to actually. Then the El Valle Suns jerseys are fire. They're in the actually good tier. Rip City jerseys. These are terrible this year. I usually love the Rip City jerseys. Then I, no one seems to like these for some reason, but these these classic Kings jerseys are so heat. I love those so much. The Spurs look like they're trying to be like. Like, there's that one pizza place that's in, like, the north called Pizza Ranch or something. It looks like they look, work at Pizza Ranch with those jerseys. They're going to go in the dog crap tier. Everyone else kind of likes them. Then this is the one that no one else likes as well, the Toronto Raptors gold jersey. I really like those. It's kind of like the ones I had in 2020, but I still like them. The Jazz is the other S tier one, and then the District of Columbia Wizards ones. I don't hate them as much as these, but I don't like them at all so that's our tier list 
Then we have the city, uh, the in-season tournament courts, which we are not going to go over in this video. Anthony Simons suffered a fractured thumb. He will be out six weeks for the Portland Trailblazers. And then on Halloween, which is the last day to make decisions on your team player options for the fourth and third year guys, uh, James Bonite, Kai Jones, Keon Johnson, Usman Garuba, Josh Christopher, and Ty Ty Washington Jr. were the players who all had their options declined. And the only player who was still on the roster of the team – who is still on the roster of the team that declined his decision is James Bonite, who was drafted 11th overall by Charlotte a few years ago in the 2021 class. Yeah, 2021 class, 11th overall point guard out of UConn, who was in the draft. It was the Josh Giddy draft class. People were saying the Thunder should have drafted James Bonite at 7 overall. That would have been disgusting for the Thunder with how terrible he's played. He's injured. He hasn't played yet this season. He's only averaged 5.1 points for his career along with two rebounds and one assist. Hold up. Give me a second. got to close out these tabs so that it will not be moving as slow. There we go. But Bo Knight is the only player that was still on the team that drafted him. And because, like, Kai Jones got released, Keon Johnson got released by the Suns, Garuba, and he got his decline. The Nets signed Keon Johnson on a two-way deal. Johnson was released by the Suns after being traded there in the Yusuf Nurkic deal, which was – who was in the Yusuf – who was, like – I forgot which – oh, that was the Drew Holiday trade, I think. So, in the Drew Holiday trade – um, no, who was that? How was it Drew Holiday? Yeah, that was. That was Drew Holiday. Okay, okay, okay. In the Drew Holiday trade, Keon Johnson got sent to the Suns. He was a victim of the roster crunch along with Ish Wainwright. Um, so the Nets get Keon Johnson on a two-way deal. Really, really, really athletic guard who can also play the two. The, the, he can play the one, two, three, and maybe the four. Really athletic. And then former legendary NCAA head coach Bob Knight dies at 83, coach at Texas Tech, Indiana. He's famous for throwing a chair across the court. He was one of the greatest coaches of all time. Uh, may he rest in peace for sure. He is a legendary head coach. Everyone should know Bob Knight's name. He never made it to the NBA, but he is the most legendary college coach ever. Walter Davis, a former Suns and North Carolina star, dies at 69. He was an amazing shooting guard, like 30, 25 point per game averages for his career or something like that. Um, rest in peace. Condolences to both of their families. Uh, rest in paradise, guys. James Harden with his famous quote, I am not a system player. I am a system. Yeah, that's definitely why you could never win a championship and why you had to have – like in the with it when he was with the Thunder, he had Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook when he was young. Then on the Rockets, he had Dwight Howard for his first few years. Then he had Chris Paul, Eric Gordon, all of them. Then on the Nets, he had KD and Kyrie. And then on the Sixers, he had Joel Embiid, and he still hasn't been able to win a championship with any of those guys. So maybe he is right. Maybe he just needs to go to a team all by himself. But that's definitely not what's happening right now because he is being traded to the Clippers to team up with Kawhi, PG, and Russell Westbrook. So maybe he should just go join, like, the Rockets or something, carry them, be his own system. Then the Grizzlies signed Bismack Biamba to a one-year deal where he gets paid $1 million if he is released before the salary guarantee date in January. But if he is on the roster through that date, he gets paid $5 million, which is kind of an overpay for Biombo, But the Grizzlies get the extra roster spot during Ja Morant's suspension. So Biombo is likely to be released once Ja gets back in 20 games, unless there is a trade by then. The Warriors get a very close win versus the Shea Gilgis alexander list Thunder. Um... Derek Lively the second has been amazing for Dallas. And we're going to do a part two. We're going to do a part two. Please watch the part two, guys. I'm going to link this down below along with my Twitter and everything. Um, I'm going to link this slideshow so y'all can look for it for yourself. 
and we're going to do part two. So please watch it. It'll be up at the same time as this video.